Yeah, of course. Um, you know, one of the most interesting things that happened at the store is the amount of traffic that we receive at the store level from all the customers interested to not only uh, purchase the equipment, but also be, you know, holding it in their hands. And obviously, not every piece of inventory that, that's displayed, we have it available. So one of the things that we do at the warehouse, which is right underneath in the basement of the store, basically is to have that inventory available as soon as the customer requests it and, and wants to either purchase it or try it out. And so one of the things that we've seen at, 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 at the warehouse level is we have a very uh, minimum time in which this uh, order, this control P, is expected to be from the time that the um, request is put in. So one of the most amazing things that happens at the store level is when our customers arrive and they're eager to not only purchase equipment, but they also, before purchasing, they want to take a look at it. They want to hold it in their hands and they want to see it. And it's clearly that we don't have the space to hold all that inventory right at the store level. So one of the things that occurs in the control P aspect is that the um, representative sends a, a request to a computer for this item that the customer is interested in either purchasing or just looking at it to be sent up to them. And so at the, at the warehouse level, one of the things that occurs is we have a team of people that are just waiting for this request that comes in and as soon as it pops up, they get a receipt that shows what, which is the item, where is the location in the warehouse. And uh, to, to be able to service that customer uh, at the fastest speed possible, we have these expectations that, that we tell our team, we gotta get this item uh, from the time that it prints as a request, uh, within three minutes to be picked, put into a tote, and then go through a, a series of conveyor belts that are all different. Uh, they're differently staged in in at the store level to service each department. And so uh, the order gets picked. It gets into a tote. It goes through a specific conveyor lift that that it services that area of the store, and up it goes. And within three minutes, it's actually in the hands of the representative that can go ahead and, and show the uh, customer. So. It's amazing how when you see the dynamics and how the team knows that uh, these control P's are so uh, urgent because we have a customer that it's waiting and we don't also don't want that customer to wait too long. So, you know, the, the, the urgency and priority that we put on these kind of type of control P orders is really amazing when you see the team functioning and moving through the warehouse to get this order picked for the customer to see it right away. Um, now, could you please explain to us uh, BOPIS, the B-O-P-I-S? Sure. BOPIS basically stands for Buy Online, Pick Up in Store. And, and basically, that's basically a service that we provided also for customers to be able to say, hey, you know what, um, I want to purchase this item, I know what I want, I'm going to put it, uh, I'm going to purchase it online and I'm just gonna be ready to go pick it up. My time is very limited to, to, uh, to look for it. And these are, a lot of these uh, items are people that are experienced. They know what they want, they understand the equipment, and most importantly, uh, they've had such an amazing experience with B&H that they trust our processes already. So the Pope is orders for us also is very time sensitive because from the time that a customer places the order online, we have a 30 minute uh, time that it needs to be picked, uh, sent up to the store uh, in a packaged uh, uh, container, ready for the customer just to arrive and, and to be able to pick it up. So uh, this is our second uh, urgent priority a type of orders that we, that we urge our teams in, at the warehouse level to work through the day. So, uh, so we not only we have the control piece, but they, and then the next level is BOPIS orders. And this is all happening live as, as the teams are working through the warehouse, not only putting inventory away, but also picking orders for the customers that are uh, arriving to pick up their inventory. That's great, thank you. Okay, um, so let's kind of start talking about the warehouse process. Um, 
Now, after a buyer's PO, um, routing logistics 440, I don't know if this makes any sense, um, when is it ready to ship to our warehouses? Sure. So, you know, one of the urgencies things that we have from a buyer PO is we know the urgency that the reason why this item was purchased is because we want to have this inventory available as soon as possible on our website. So one of the things that we do at the receiving aspect, uh, and this is whether it's at, at the uh, 420 warehouse or any of the fulfillment centers in New Jersey, we uh, expedite these, these uh, POs to be uh, quickly received. So on any given time, uh, you're going to see that the priority of this inventory is to uh, receive it, verify it for accuracy. We also pay a very close attention to the integrity of the item, making sure that it's not damaged, making sure that it's ready for the customer uh, to be shipped or, or sold to the customer. So one of the things that we do is as we go through this quality checks, um, we also uh, have a timeline that within three hours of being received into our warehouse that it's put away um, and it's ready in a location so when the order uh, drops to us it's ready and available so that's definitely a high level of, of priority that we emphasize on any inventory that it's uh, it's being received for the warehouse awesome thank you so much um, my next question I guess is about, uh, do you have any insight into the inbound logistic team and 440's uh, methodology for uh, appointing and scheduling and document collection? Is that a question that makes sense? Yeah, one of the things that um, we try to, not only we're in the process of learning a lot more, but also uh, understand and enhance is working together with our traffic team and flow management team. You know, within the dynamics from the time uh, 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 in the supply chain aspect of, of any inventory, um, you know, we have a, our, our buying team who is securing this inventory for us. They're the ones that are uh, uh, the initiators of the supply chain to secure the inventory that we know and we're confident that our customers are going to love. Secondly, obviously, then becomes the fact that now we want to track this inventory to make sure that it's on its way and it's it's being delivered on time. And so we work very closely with our vendors and and the transportation team to make sure that the minute the vendor says that this inventory is on its way, um, they have a portal where they can put in their information, how, how much inventory is coming, the quantity, the pallet, and which is the transportation company that we expect to do. In this portal, what they do now is they uh, they also tell us, for example, the, the name of the company, the carrier that we expect that delivery to be made for. So that way, when it arrives in our facility, we are quickly able to make the reference. And it goes down to the um, specific of an hour appointment. So we have to have um, these uh, appointment slots uh, to be accurate because obviously we have different teams of trucks companies that are arriving to us. So um, if somebody said I'm coming uh, at this time with uh, X amount of boxes or X amount of pallets, we expect them to be there for that time because our, our schedule is pretty tight to be able to, to receive that inventory um, and be put away um, in, in an appropriate time. We also have not only our, our regular truck in uh, uh, traffic portion, but we also have vendors that, because their quantity that is shipped is it's smaller quantities, they send us um, inventory through uh, small parcels, FedEx, UPS, and we have on average about 2,000 packages that we are unloading every morning uh, of inventory that comes through small parcels that has to go through a process also quality check and received. So we, between the uh, vendor, buying team, logistics, uh, traffic, and operations, up to the point to make sure that it's in a, in a location ready, we're very much connected and we're co constantly communicating any, any delays that may occur during that time. That was great. Um, that kind of perfectly starts to touch on the next question I had, which is, uh, what, what, what is the initial steps for when the items, the inventory, they arrive at the warehouse? What do you, what happens first? So, 
at the time that an inventory arrives at the warehouse, um, again, we go through a check process verifying that it's the right uh, inventory, that is the right quantity, that everything meets the expectations of B&H where this, cust this item is it's ready to be shipped to a customer in the, in the highest quality. So once that's done, then the ne next stage is we have a process of putting the inventory away in locations. And at the warehouse levels, we have different type of sizes of inventory. We also um, uh, manage our inventory based on velocities and, and, and cubing sizes. So every aspect of the warehouse, whether it's in, in the 420 uh, warehouse or at the fulfillment centers uh, in New Jersey, every inventory has, uh, has a slotting um, specific that determines where this inventory is going to go and from the time it's received it goes through a series of, of movements through the warehouse up to the point where it needs to be put away if it's if it's a box and the box needs to be put away as a whole or if it's down to the individual units where the box has to be opened up individual units go into these plastic tote containers and it arrives to the uh, forward pick destination and that's where you know we have people ready that every inventory that is arriving they know the system drives them where they need to put it away to make it available for a customer. Awesome. Uh, could you then uh, walk me through the process of okay so now everything's unloaded um, and it's what it's checked and then scans uh, where does it go from there um, where does it kind of end up and how does it become ready to be sent out? Once the inventory has been received, it's verified, checked for quality, and it has been put away in a location. Now this is where, you know, the next exciting thing that happens. So this is where customers start uh, placing inventory um, um, orders, um, placing uh, orders online for inventory to, to be processed. So we have a very uh, a sophisticated system where systematically <clears throat> every customer that, that places an order online, it gets attached to a container where this container now moves through the series of warehouse to the multiple destinations of, of to fulfill this order. So one of the things that, that uh, amazes us is the level of technology that we have through the conveyor belt system that through a barcode in this container, uh, basically from the moment that we link an order for a customer into that container, it pretty much travels. It knows where it needs to go um, systematically. And so it goes through a series of conveyor belts and scanners and diverts and moves around and people are touching it and picking an order. So depending on the size of the order uh, and where the items are located throughout a warehouse, um, Basically, that's the journey of this container that it goes through all the different steps to fulfill that customer order. And everything that we do, obviously, uh, to increase that, that high level of, of customer service is um, uh, uh, in general for orders that are placed online, we have a same day commitment. Anything that's placed by 6 p.m., uh, that customer will get that order um, by the end of the evening, it will get shipped and ready to be out for delivery for that customer. And within that priority of shipment, obviously we also work through different type of, of delivery options. So if, if a customer uh, chose that it's a priority shipment order, uh, paid overnight or two, two day uh, select, then we need to make sure that we meet those expectations timelines. So if somebody places an order by 6 p.m., we have a cutoff with our, with our carrier that, uh, that it's an overnight, that it has to leave our facility no later than 7.30 to make the airplane at the local airport and be on its way for the, to be delivered the next day. So it's, it's incredible how amazing from the time that we received the order to the processes that our teams at the different warehouses, they look at this order with that level of urgency. But they're not looking at this from a task level. They're not looking at just completing a task. They're looking at, at the customer level. And that is the fact that they're understanding that this customer took the time to go into our website, uh, uh, believes in the B&H concept and quality, and uh, 
with that mindset, everything that they do, that they touch, every effort that they put in to get the order out the way, it's emphasized through that level of energy and, and ethical work to get it through. And I, there's times when um, I have employees that are running with this container from one end of the building to the other end just because they know that there's a cutoff, that the, that the carrier is ready to pick up that last package and we want that last package to make it on time for the customer to have it. So that's the level of integrity that we, um, that we have in, in our workforce and that's how proud we are in them to, that they understand what the true B&H um, focus is to be a, a, a top level service, customer service. That was amazing. What I love is like you're, I'm about to ask a question, I have one story in my head, and you just answer it. So, really great stuff. Um, so, uh, one, one more, I guess, like, still just trying to, like, get all the, all the pieces of the puzzle in terms of the inbound process. How many, um, how many parcels, how many pallets do you say come to your door or your gate every, every day? Our average day for the inbound volume, we can have anywhere up to um, 22 to 2,500 packages that we unload uh, on our parcel side. Um, we also have approximately anywhere between 300 to about 600 pallets that are also being unloaded um, in all of our facilities. Um, if you can imagine this on average, we have different metrics that we use for our performance, but the metrics is not what, that, that what we focus on. We focus on uh, uh, similarly on the customer level. So in, in the inbound, we know that our customers are both internal and external. So the internal customers are uh, pretty much our buying team, our uh, flow management team who have done already the work ahead of us to, to get this inventory uh, uh, to us and so we take pride in understanding that the minute that we've secured that inventory and that they've done their work to to get it uh, uh, to us now is our job to put it away in in, in the fastest uh, uh, and most efficient way but we always have this level of high level of quality in, involved because we also know that these packages are being routed through different carriers and being moved from pallets to another pallet, to a truck, to off the floor in the dock. So we want to make sure that through that movement that we also are inspecting the, the quality of work. So anywhere between the 300 or 600 pallets daily, um, up to 22 to 2600 parcels per day, that could translate into anywhere up to um, 5,000 lines and Sometimes we look at numbers that it's, it's, it's somewhere upwards in the 77 to 80,000 items that we receive for that day. That was great. Um, go. examples of situations that have demanded um, either critical thinking or out-of-the-box thinking, troubleshooting uh, within the warehouse? Yes, of course. Um, I think that one of the things that you, you know we teach our teams uh, is that this is a constantly evolving environment. You know, it's, it's you know, sometimes I often say the the phrase prepare for the unexpected uh, and they look at me like well how am I going to prepare if I don't expect something and I said that's exactly it there's always something that's going to happen in this type of environment that we have to be flexible we have to be prepared and the concept is always how do we provide that, that next level of service to our customers so one of the things that we've learned to do is be very adaptive 
uh, you know, we're, we're, we're flexible. We understand that there's a lot of things that are outside our, our control, the environment outside. Our truckers, sometimes they're going to show up late. We have to be able to adapt to that and understand that that inventory that is coming to us, um, it's necessary. It's, uh, it's critical to have it uh, on, our, uh, on our website, on our inventory, to make it available for, for our customers. We recently had a, a large uh, shipment of, of Canon Z8 uh, cameras that came in the, the day before, and within two days, they, they were being a big release. We have to be f adaptive and flexible to that because not only um, we understand that our our customer base are eager to to wait for us uh, and they're eager to have the, that inventory in their hands and they want to secure it. And also, quantity could be limited, so we want to make that as smooth as possible. Uh, another thing that we're doing in, in our teams as as an operations and fulfillment uh, initiatives is basically to understand within our levels um, how we can be better every day. So we have a, a theory that we call root cause analysis and that basically we stem from simply asking the why. Uh, if something, if, if we uh, did an error, why was the error created? Um, and then through the five whys, eventually we get to the, to the root cause of how we can make things better. Uh, one of the, one initiative that's part of this root cause analysis is bringing people that are are aware and know the processes to a table and have open conversations with them and brainstorm. Uh, and I can tell you that the level of efficiency that we've achieved from the different levels, from employees, team leads, supervisors, managers, up to directors, when we have these type of open conversations, allows us to to rethink. What happens on the day to day, day on the day to day basis at a whole different level? We are constantly critically thinking um, how the processes that we have affect the customer, how the processes that we have they can be improved, and um, and that level of, of thinking allows us to make small changes that we know that whatever if if it took us three minutes or, or over uh, three minutes a control P the day before, how do we do better the next day by understanding what were the causes of that control P leading to a small delay. And that's basically it, just a critical thinking, asking the questions, having a, a, an environment where people are, are uh, cultivated to, to be open, honest, and, and also to, to think outside the box. So when a customer places an order, um, in our system, in the warehouse level, mm -hmm. it's, it goes through a level of verification through customer service, making sure everything is it's, uh, good with the purchase, and then it's released to the warehouse. Uh, again, part of our commitment to stay, uh, to be able to ship any order up to 6 p.m., we print what we call printing, but we release these orders that our, our customers are placing every hour. So every hour, we constantly pulling from this pool of, of uh, orders that in, are in queue, uh, waiting to be processed. And then we have a series of, of processes that we have. If, if the items that are being placed in order are small, they go through a series of conveyor belts. Uh, first, the first initiation is we link an order, virtual order, to a, a container or a tote that has a barcode. And that automatically, that link, what it does is it allows us that systematically this tow will be routed to the destination of where the inventory is located for this item that the customer placed in order. And then finally, it, it actually goes through shipping. Now, through the process of, of getting diverted to the different zones and where you're gonna get picked, um, 
uh, obviously we have different locations through, uh, throughout the different warehouses that we have. So uh, we have, it's either by container, by a person here at the 420 warehouse, we have a person that would actually move with this container uh, and pick the, the different items that the customer is requesting, put them in the container to take it to a shipping station and get packed. And, and so there's a lot of different levels of touches and, and people that are handling this inventory. And so one of the focuses for them is to put the high level of quality that every time they see the, the item that they need to put that make sure that it's in, in, in the most, in the highest level of quality for the customer to receive. Do you explain the process of releasing to fulfillment slash printing? Sure. So the releasing to fulfillment basically it's the concept that when a customer places an order online, it goes through a process here of verification through our uh, finance finance team and, and the customer service teams. And once they verify that the credit card and 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 uh, the account is active and there's no issues holding the order, it gets released to the warehouse and. In the warehouse, we call, have a portal that we call MicroStrategy, and it synchronizes with our Unix system, our Unix warehouse man management system. And so in this MicroStrategy, now we have this visibility of how many orders got dropped to us for that one hour period. And through that, we have a series of, of uh, different selections that the system was able to analyze. If this is a a single line order, if it's a multi-line order, if the inventory is a small and if it belongs in pick mod or it belongs in perfect pick, or if the item is a large item, like a TV, a large printer that comes from the large racking stations, also that department also has the ability to print those orders because they get picked separately. They get picked by by our um, machine operators. Often it's either a tire truck or a cherry picker who picks these large items in, puts them in a pallet and delivers them to the shipping station ready to be processed. Excellent. Um, all right, and then, and then uh, can you tell me what induction is? Sure. So induction is the concept that when an order now virtually drops and it's released to us, we have a series of totes color totes and each color tote for the warehouse is designated for a priority that we want to visually uh, manage as it moves through the warehouse. We have a 650,000 square foot facility that has conveyor belt system diverts and it goes to multiple locations. So uh, our best way to track and to understand what type of order this is through the color totes. So at the induction level the system will understand and, and let us know if this is a multi-line, single line, if this order is a small, uh, based on queuing, uh, it can go to one specific area in shipping. Um, we also have uh, a, a red color tote, which is one of our highest priority, because these are uh, orders that a customer uh, is, is pla place the order, but wants to pick it up at a store here in New York. So that inventory is in New Jersey, and we have a shuttle that, that comes back and forth between New Jersey and New York three times a week. And so one of the things that we do is we have a very tight schedule that when this order drops to us, for example, we, we have an order that drops at 10 o'clock, um, that that order is gonna be on the van or on the truck to be shuttled here to New York City by noontime so the customer can pick it up here at the store by 1 p.m. So the level of inductions and the different types of totes that we use help to manage and prioritize the type of orders that, that are being moved through the different conveyors. So one of the things when you look at the warehouse and you look up and you see all kinds of conveyor and totes being moved around, guess what? There is a thought process behind every color tote and everything that, that is traveling through the conveyor belt has been inducted through this one system that virtually links an order to a container. Um, all right, cool, 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 cool. Um, so I guess let's talk about uh, PicMod and Perfect Pick. What are these? Um, could you explain how they're different, they're similar? Um, yeah, could you tell me more about that, please? So we have two forward pick locations 
that are for small items that can fit in a container or in a shelf type of uh, section. So uh, our pick mod consists of eight zones and these eight zones host um, uh, inventory that based on our velocity that, uh, that we've set um, uh, through the process of volume and, and how, how often they're purchased and the quantities in which they're purchased. These are items that have been slotted to, to be their home or their front pick location and to be in the pick mod area. And in the pick mod within the eight zones, that's how we have a conveyor belt that travels right in the middle of these eight zones. And for every zone, there is one divert that the toad will come out of if there's an item that's needed that's located within that specific zone. Um, so it, it's a it's a, a very uh, sophisticated and yet manual process because as the toad comes in, the toads get diverted. We have teams of people per zone that are eagerly and waiting to pick that that order or to put the inventory away, for that matter. Uh, to keep the lines moving. Uh, Perfect Pick, it's, it's, what can I say, it's, it's our next level sophisticated uh, picking process. And this is uh, uh, by OPEC systems. Uh, and basically what it is, is we have uh, uh, robotics um, system in which there's inventory that is, it's, that is uh, staged in specific lanes. Each lane has containers, uh, and we host anywhere up to uh, 63,000 type of SKUs uh, in that in that area. So you can tell the the amount of uh, quantity of SKUs that we have in that area is pretty high. And so one of the things that that we that we do um, in there is the system drives all these containers to where the item is located. And if, if a customer ordered uh, three different items, this toad could be diverted into three different lanes in the perfect pick. And we have one operator that is just waiting in there for these bots that are moving up and down through the warehouse um, and, and through the lane, just ready to, to, to take the inventory from the location, bring it to the operator, this operator basically just takes the inventory out of that container and puts it to an order, uh, to a container that's ready for an order. And also it's putting away inventory at the same time. So it's a very fast moving. And when you look at it from, you know, one of the things I love to do is when I uh, uh, stand and look at, uh, at the perfect pick system in general, you almost get a feeling like you got these bots flying through the sky, moving up and down constantly. In, in that area, just picking orders and moving containers in and out of those locations to service the orders that, that are being placed through the induction system. So it's pretty uh, pretty cool system that we have in there. What is, um, so, so what is, uh, what is racking? How is that related? Is that a different process? Is that similar? Um, is that part of this process? So we have two types of racking systems. We have our racking for uh, inventory that is uh, non-conveyable. And so these are items that are very large that do not fit a, a plastic tote container and do not travel through the conveyor. So instead, they're uh, stored in pallet locations in racks. And in there we have machine operators with different type of machines, either you know, auto picker or tow truck that are in these aisles moving up and down picking and putting away orders um, uh, all, pretty much all day long. And, and those type of items, when, when they're picked for, for the shipment for, for a customer, uh, they're placed in the pallet and they're transported down to a specific shipping location. So at the shipping department, we have uh, different sub-departments in shipping based on the type of item that we are, that the customer is ordering. So if a customer ordered something that we can ship in its original box, it goes to a specific shipping area department that is called Originals, and we ship and we process that uh, order in there. If the inventory is in a tripod, or it's a tripod section, um, uh, in order for us to ship it, it had, we have these special boxes 
that was specifically designed for for dry pots uh, items so they're taken to this specific uh, ship shipping sub department to be processed there and then the next step is items that are non-conveyable we call them NJ, NJ rag that we call them regular items that uh, have to be packed into a box but we do a whole shipping at that moment so that's the type of inventory that we have in one section for the racking now the other side of rack that we have is what we call overstock so if you can imagine what, what overstock would be is for example we have a pick mod in our perfect pick uh, forward pick uh, departments locations and in there you can only host let's say an item we can only place 20 of this item in this shelf location well we have we may have hundreds of units of that item so we can't put everything in that location so we have a racking location that is called overstock and then this overstock is where we put any inventory that it's excess of what can fit in the forward pick location or in the pick mine and perfect pick and as the system or as the, what we call min and max model as this model shifts and moves based on orders being uh, generated our system behind the scenes it's it's analyzing what is the need the min and the minimum and the maximum level of inventory that should be in that uh, location and it's replenishing from the overstock racking to now get picked linked into a tote and in this case is usually a blue or a purple tote and it goes through the induction process to make its way to the destination whether it's pick mod or perfect pick and so when you think about it in the analytics that the system happens in the background it's truly amazing I mean you have an inventory for example you buy a camera or we have a camera that's in stock and we have 10 that we can only fit 10 of, 10 of that item in stock because of the bin size location but we have a hundred of those cameras in stock every time this every time we pick this camera and the, and, the, and the quantity goes down in that shelf the system is analyzing now I need to bring this stock back up uh, to its maximum level to kind of prepare for the next round of orders that when the orders uh, continue to drop that inventory is ready and available for the picker to fulfill these orders so it's truly an amazing concept and system that's going behind the scenes not only the analytics but most importantly the the teams that are working behind the scenes to monitor this through the micro strategy through the unix systems and making sure that also these orders are constantly getting printed and being picked and being inducted and this goes hour by hour by hour almost replicating the uh the synergy of, of this process very cool. Uh, are you doing good? Do you, do you need water? Um, I'm good. Yeah, thank Great. you. Um, okay, so let's talk about the, the actual process of shipping. Uh, who touches it? Where does it go? So again, in shipping, we have different sub-departments uh, within the shipping department. So, for example, we have an area that we call IPAC. And the IPAC area is what we call our perfect pick of shipping and why is that perfect pick in shipping is because every item that arrives to this department it's already been analyzed by the system to that can only fit within a two sizes of boxes that that it's automatically ma being constantly made by a, by a uh, auto pack system and so uh, every order that gets there to this department um, has a specific cube measured already for that item and for that order that cannot exceed the size of those boxes. In there we have an average up to 14 operators that work around the shift that are constantly just packing an order. So the way it does is a container arrives with the inventory that's been linked through the initial induction process and the inventory has been uh, picked and so this uh, user scans the tote and then scans a box and now basically what happened in this case is the tote the information from the order of this tote now got transferred into the box that has a also a license plate once that box is scanned now the user is ready to scan every item into the box so it grabs each item scans the barcode often they might ask them to scan a serial number 
and then it places the item inside the box. Well, how do we measure accuracy? Well, if the order um, is missing an, uh, an item, basically something went wrong. Either somebody put uh, the wrong quantity or something must fall off the box. So we go through the process of root cause analysis, understanding what's going on. But to fulfill the order, this order now has to go to one of our analysts to be um, uh, looked into. And within a, a short period of time, within an hour or so, we have to regenerate a new request for this item to come uh, to the uh, problem solving area or the analyst so that order can be fulfilled. Sometimes we have items that are extras. Well, you know, maybe somebody put an extra item that uh, based on the quantity. So that item now gets put on the tote and has to be returned to the stock. If the order is perfect and there's no issues with it, it's very simple. Now the order is tied into the box, everything goes into our conveyor system and it's um, uh, weighed, uh, measured, um, it goes through a print apply label and it goes off to shipping. And the weighing of this order is very important because we also know that there are times that there's an inventory, uh, also that's a second step of quality a uh, quality check that we have where if the weight of the box doesn't match the systematic weight that the system predicted it should be it will not give it a shipping label instead it will reroute it to a different area where we will then instead uh, analyze why the the system is, is saying that the weight is off so we have a pretty sophisticated system shipping before it, it goes out to to the customer to ensure that uh, the highest level of quality is met through the process and so and that's one one area of the sub department we also have like I mentioned before from large items we have either NJ rank tripod originals where we ship our non conveyable items we also have our VAS system and VAS basically stands for value added system and what this is is just almost like a second check of an order where anything that got picked from a container in, into a container it gets link from a container to a box the box is matched and then every item gets scanned into a box except in here we don't ship the box it gets put in the in a container that will go through a series of lanes where there's people waiting to put the actual dunnage the, the air bubbles all of the packaging material to secure the inventory there it goes through through a weight station and then once everything is confirmed to be correct it actually gets a shipping label with a specific door where the final destination is for our carrier. Awesome. All right. Uh, we're almost there. Um, could you kindly explain uh, Panda to me? Yes. So Panda, it's not the bear. Panda basically is an acronym that we stand that stands for print and apply. And basically, what this system is is, like I mentioned before, from the value added. Uh, process is where the order is checked from the time it got picked the order is verified by a person um, that the inventory that was picked it's correct to go into, into the box so again the process is there's a tote a container the user takes the tote of the conveyor belt scans the LPN grabs a new box scans the box with a new LPN in it and it starts adding all the inventory from the tote into the box. Once the system says the order is complete, everything is good, it places it on the belt, but the box is open. Panda basically is the area where once this box is put in a conveyor and arrives there, we have teams, we have seven lanes, and teams in there are basically ready to, um, every box, open box that arrives, they put the dunnage, the bubbles inside there to make sure that the items don't move and that they're protected. Now we have another person that puts an invoice for the order inside there. And the last is we have a person that pushes the box through a print apply uh, machine that seals the box. Yeah. Once the box is sealed, it goes through a weight station, so the weight is measured. And if the weight is correct, then it will go to the next step, which is the actual print and apply machine and this machine is the one that places the uh, the address label in it alongside the address label if we have an order that um, 
that has specific restrictions uh, such as lithium battery or anything similar that needs specific uh, markings on it, the print apply machine will also provide that specific marking for the carrier so they are aware of what type of inventory is in there. So the Panda uh, department plays a critical role because that team is ready just to move boxes through the lane but more importantly they making sure that the, every box uh, the dunnage of every box is secure and protected for the long journey that these boxes go through with our um, carrier um, team. Awesome. Okay, so from there is that kind of the last step and then it ships out? That's correct. So once it passes through a panda, then the shipping label gets applied. That shipping label has a, a dock door in that shipping label that says where is, is the destination. And the dock door is basically our partners that, that we work with that services our shipping, like whether it's UPS, FedEx, um, each door is designated to a specific hub, a destination for, for these uh, carriers. So we could have a hub that is, is uh, the destination is in Robbinsville, or we have a hub for our express lanes that it's, the destination is the Newark Airport. So every box that has a shipping uh, label that has that destination, it will divert down into that uh, door, the dock door that has a final destination for the carrier's uh, hub. And that's how the box makes it out of our fulfillment center. Awesome. Um, so how many, how many orders do you receive typically per day? How many do you manage to fulfill? So one of the things that we do again is we're very much uh, uh, focused on our customer service. And so we've been able to service any order that arrives to us by 6 p.m., uh, Monday through Thursday. Uh, if, if a customer places an order by 6 p.m., we will ship that order by the end of the day, which uh, depending on the carrier, it could be either by 8 p.m., the priority shipment paid overnight, or 11.45, the reg regular ground. On average, um, we ship anywhere between uh, 22 to 24,000 orders, and um, on a regular Monday, it's our heaviest day coming from the weekend accumulation, we shipped up to 29,000 orders. During the peak time, when we're talking about Cyber Monday and uh, Black Friday type of weekend, uh, we shipped anywhere up to 45,000 orders um, per day. Now, this is uh, combined with all the different fulfillment centers. So we have a fulfillment center uh, in Pensauken, uh they operate what we call a lot of our, our original inventory that we ship directly to our customers in its original box. And that's an amazing team that operates day to day to service those type of orders. And on average, they can process about 2,000 orders from there. We also have our truck shipments at the Burlington facility. And they do anything that is very large scale and that is not through a parcel carrier. So meaning that these are very large TVs, anything 65 inches and over, large printers. Um, and so these go through our different carriers, MFY, ABF, and uh, on average, they ship um, anywhere up to two to 300 orders per day. And um, so that combined, we also have our, our uh, 420 team here in New York, that they also ship in on average about a thousand orders Per day, so all these fulfillment centers combined together, they're working very closely and and and, and very focused to do that service level um, uh, day to day to meet those expectations. So right now, uh, our <clears throat> one of the things that we brag about is that at the service level, um, we're shipping 99.6 percent of all what we call ground shipments. Uh, and that's the, I would say, the majority of our orders of the 22, 24,000 are parcel shipments, so ground shipments. So we ship 99.9% .9 service level. And on priority orders that are paid overnight um, and upgrade uh, shipments, um, we're shipping 100% of those orders on time, no later than, than 8, 8.30 p.m. So as you can see, this metrics all basically means is that we have a very 
dedicated, focused team that is constantly moving around and having within their radar the concept of B&H being customer service driven. We're, we're pretty much there. Uh, just just going to get two things from you, just an intro, outro for the, the part one, intro, outro for part two. Um, so would you just uh, say something like, uh, you know, just like a welcome. Here we're going to be talking about the process of uh, inbound orders and then just a little um, thanks for watching type thing. Uh, does that make sense? So... First of all, I want to introduce myself. My, my name is Jonathan Paredes. I'm the Director of Fulfillment here at the, the New Jersey and New York facilities. And I just want to say that I'm, I'm very pleased to be part of this amazing team here at b and um, My tenure here has been just uh, utterly amazing so with a high level of support, leadership that, that it's in place that truly lives the, the, the focus of being customer service driven and doesn't shy away from from creativity, from challenges, from from uh, being creative of, of servicing our customers. Um, what you're going to uh, be seeing in, throughout this video and this introduction is basically just how amazing our team is. From the time that uh, the orders are placed from our, our vendors and, and our uh, buying team to our transportation team, flow management, down to the inbound receiving all the way down through the processing of orders internally, whether we're putting away inventory ready for uh, customers to place their orders, or we actually fulfilling the orders of customers out to the shipping outbound and including our partners with FedEx. You're gonna see through this journey how uh, amazing and intricate this uh, level of supply chain is internally for us. But more importantly is the people that, that that are behind every touch, every movement. Uh, when you see the faces of the people that are are touching this uh, inventory and fulfilling these orders, they're not just doing this based on a task oriented or because there's a work, but more so because they truly believe that the the concept of B&H being um, a very focused uh, customer service and providing this level of service to our customers that we're more important in retaining and building our relationship with customers than, than fulfilling orders. So you're going to see that through this journey that our amazing team from New Jersey, New York, uh, the dedication and the smiles that you're going to see through there, it's truly testament of how amazing this company is. And uh, I'm going to be very happy to take you along this journey. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and, and, and uh, uh, can uh, in some way capacity, if you haven't done so, visit our amazing fulfillment centers. I can tell you that uh, one of the things that you're going to see when you come in and, and take the time to, to get to know operations is you're going to see the smiles in the faces of people that work there. You're going to see the dedication and you're going to see how truly um, amazing this company is that while we may keep the uh, mom and pop shop uh, mentality of servicing our customers and being very personal with our customers and our vendors. We also are a very big box type of uh, uh, operations that we have sophisticated systems. We have a robotic system that, that picks our orders and we have a high level of conveyor belt that in which um, all of our teams from, from the facilities uh, maintenance teams, operations teams, uh, our IT support, um, and everybody in between, between customer service and, and the buying team, we are all uh, focused and dedicated and connected to, to service our, our, our customers up to the last mile service. So I hope you get to enjoy this video and I look forward to seeing all of you in the fulfillment centers soon enough.